Greetings. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean, your host. Website can be found at www.scriptureandprophecy.com. Today we are looking at Psalm 75 and Psalm 76, along with Proverbs 21. We're looking for some wisdom, some encouragement from the Psalms and the Proverbs today. Psalm 75 and Psalm 76 are both short, but they both seem to deal with the with uh, God's judgment upon the wicked. It describes kind of his wrath and uh, you just see the nuance of how he tends to deal and how it all is going to come to a head eventually. Let's just take a look. Psalm 75, Psalm 76. King James Bible. Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks, for that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it. Selah. I said unto the fools, Deal not foolishly, and to the wicked, Lift not up the horn, lift not up your horn on high, speak not with a stiff neck. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge, he putteth down one, and setteth up another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red, and it is full of mixture, and he poureth out of the same. But the dredge thereof, all the wicked of the earth, shall wing them out and drink them. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off. But the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. All right, that's Psalm 75. And you kind of see God speaking, starting with verse 2. He says, when I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it. He's saying it's all going to get destroyed. Peter talks about how all the elements, everything's just going to be consumed. Verse 5 says, lift not up your horn on high. Speak not with a stiff neck. He's talking to the he's talking to the wicked about being prideful. Do not be prideful. Do not exalt your own strength. Do not lift up your horn. For promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south, but God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. A picture of him being in control. God decides. And as we're going to see here in Psalm 76, This is a warning to the kings of the earth. God can put one up and putteth down another any time he wants. The king's hearts are in his hands. Verse 8 again, he says, In the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red. It is full of mixture, and he poureth out the same, but the dredge thereof. All the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink them. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked also I will cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Psalm 76 In Judah Judah is God known. His name is great in Israel. In Salem also is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. There break the arrows of the bow, the shield, and the sword in the battle. Selah. Thou art more glorious and excellent than the mountains of prey. The stout-hearted are spoiled, they have slept their sleep, and none of the men of might have found their hands. At thy rebuke, O O God of Jacob, both the chariot and the horses are cast into a dead sleep. Thou, even thou, art to be feared, and who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry? 
Thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven, the earth feared and was still. When God rose, arose to judgment, to save all the meek of the earth, Selah. Surely the wrath of man shall praise thee, the remainder of wrath shalt thou restrain. Vow and pray unto the Lord your God, let all that be round about him bring presents unto him that ought to be feared. He shall cut off the spirit of princes, he is terrible to the kings of the earth. Again, the psalm's talking about God's going to judge the wicked. He's going to be terrible to the kings of the earth. But he's, he, but he's going to rescue the meek. One familiar verse. Verse 7, Thou, even thou, art to be feared, and who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry. Reminds me a lot of Revelation chapter 6. Let's go to that real quick and read the last three verses, 15, 16, and then 17. Verse 15 starts with, And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? That last verse, For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? Reminds me of verse 7 here in Psalm 76, Thou, even thou, art to be feared, and who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry? Well, that is the Psalms for this morning. Let's move on. We're ready for proverb. 21. Warnings and instructions continued. Let's have a look. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it wheresoever he will. Okay. We have to stop right there. I just got... I did not prep for Proverbs. I read the Psalms last night and uh, kind of studied them for a little bit and then went to bed and did not read Proverbs 21. We just spent a few minutes talking about how the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. And Psalm 75 talked ended with saying, He shall cut off the spirit of princes and he is terrible to the kings of the earth. This is why I say the word of God is living and God is in control. This is not a coincidence. This is not an accident. This is the Spirit of God being upon the order in which we read these things this morning. He's reminding us this morning who's in control. Mm, very power. I just can't believe that that's the first verse in, in Proverbs 21 this morning. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water he turneth it whatsoever he will. Man, you know, we're all bent out of shape, right, about the election and, and all these things. We need to remember, God's the one who appoints the, the, the leaders. They think that they're in control. They think that they're doing it. But he's doing it so that his will would be brought forth. It's just hard for us to grasp that sometimes because we think that God's always going to make decisions that just make our lives easy and happy but that's not the case he's about moving forward the kingdom of God sometimes he's got to turn up the heat on his people sometimes he's got to make things difficult to bring a spirit of righteousness back so let's not be bent out of shape about who's going to be the leader of what the heart of the king is in God's hand and he's he, he moves it wherever he shall go. Let's read it one more time and then we'll move on with the rest of Proverbs 21. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water. He turneth it whithersoever he will. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. But the Lord pondereth the hearts. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. 
and high look and a proud heart, and the plowing of the wicked is sin. The thoughts of the diligent, diligent tend only to plenteousness, but of everyone that is hasty only to want. The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. The robbery of the wicked shall destroy them because they refuse to do judgment. The way of a man is froward, that means perverse, and strange. But as for the pure, his work is right. It is better to dwell in a corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. The soul of the wicked desireth evil, his neighbor findeth no favor in his eyes. When the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise, and when the wise is instructed, he receiveth knowledge. The righteous man wisely considereth the house of the wicked, but God overthroweth the wicked for their wickedness. Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. I want to stop on that one real quick. A point that I've been trying to make... Uh, a lot lately and that I've been making to other people not just on the podcast is is that the main thing that God is concerned with when, in regards to his people is how they treat the poor and those in need that's why when we had the separation of the goats Jesus says here's why you're being separated some of you are going into paradise some of you are going into destruction it's because when I was hungry you fed me not when I needed clothing you clothed me not when I was in prison you visited me not and what you've done to the least of these, you've done unto me. It's critically important. Peter says that, uh, that charity covers a multitude of sins. Here this says, Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor. In other words, who just ignores them? Who ignores those in need? He also shall cry himself shall not be heard God is saying what comes around goes around you reap what you sow if you're going to turn a blind eye you're going to turn a deaf ear to the poor who are crying out for your help the same is coming to you let's move on verse 14 a gift in secret pacifieth anger and a reward in the bosom strong wrath it is joy to the, to the just to do judgment, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. The wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous and the transgressor, transgressor for the upright. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. By the way, that's the second time Solomon's made this point. That he's making the point that you're better off in the corner of the house somewhere by yourself. You're, you're better off in the wilderness than to be st st stuck at home with a woman who wants to fight and argue. A contentious woman. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. There is treasure to be desired, and oil and dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spendeth it up. He that followeth out the righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness and honor. A wise man scaleth the city of the mighty, and casteth down the strength, the confidence thereof. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Proud and haughty scorner is his name who dealeth in proud wrath. The desire of the slothful kindleth him, for his hands refuse to labor. He coveteth greedily all the day long, but the righteous giveth and spareth not. There's another picture. The righteous spareth not. They, they give they don't withhold from those in need. 
The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. How much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind? A false witness shall perish, but the man that heareth speaketh constantly. A wicked man hardeneth his face, but as for the upright, he directeth his way. There is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. That is our wisdom and our encouragement for this morning. And it's been a powerful one. I love to see examples of God being in control and God's anointing and blessing being upon this work, especially in real time. And that's what I believe I've seen this morning, and I pray that it's been a blessing and an encouragement to you as well. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for listening. Thank you to those of you who are gracious enough to support the podcast through patreon.com slash truthfed or through the PayPal. And those of you who can't afford to do that, your prayers are much coveted, and I appreciate all of you so much. Thank you again for allowing me this privilege to study the Word of God, to record it, and to send it out to all of you. Peace and grace be with you all, and until next time, God bless.